we had, yes, data out of China, but then we got the PBOC talking about buybacks and all they're doing in that arena. Is that why we see this surge towards the close on, uh, on Chinese stocks? Yes, good morning, Anna. Uh, exactly. Um, when in doubt, uh, get the PBOC to come and comment again. And I think the market really takes a lot of um, uh, comfort from the comments from Pang Gongsheng, the, the PBOC um, chair, who um, was talking about um, the take up that they've already seen and the go live for uh, some of the, the, the initiatives they have to boost the uh, stock market, both in terms of lending out money so that companies can do buybacks and also um, providing uh, some leverage against other assets for investments into equities. That combination seems to have given the market a renewed sense of confidence today. And so hence, we've seen this, this big rally that's taken us up almost 5% by the end of the day and kind of steamrolled everything. Any concerns there might have been over the, the data, which was good, but sort of mixed as well, um, and, and everything else that came before. So put your trust in, in PAN, basically. Paul, if the Chinese equity market goes up, does the Indian equity market go down? Is this a zero-sum game? I, I wouldn't say it's exactly that simple, but certainly that is something that we have been seeing uh, through this month. India's uh, stock market is headed for the worst month in a couple of years. Um, there's a big, uh, a few different factors kind of that are playing into that. So not just the relative appeal of China, and we have seen international funds taking some of their money out of India, uh, but also internally, there's been a big slug of supply coming through. We've seen um, I IPOs coming into the market, Hyundai's, uh, which was uh, being priced this week, uh, the biggest India's ever seen, received kind of lukewarm um, demand. And also um, some of the, the founder members of big companies are choosing this moment to cash out a little bit, take a little bit of their profits from the companies as well. So there's been a number of factors that are weighing on India's stocks. Um, one other thing is just the, the, the amount of the, the, the country leans on that market for funding. So over in the credit space, uh, still a relatively small and underdeveloped market. There are some restrictions on how much companies can invest in infrastructure and the like. And so if I may take Five seconds for a shameless plug for our India Credit Forum coming up in a few hours' time, uh, where we'll be interviewing the central bank governor. Um, you can tune in via Top Live, you can tune in via your terminal, and also on the web to catch up and learn more about what's going on in India's markets. We, we love a promo, uh, Paul. Talk to us a little bit then about the rate through into the rest of the world. You mentioned that maybe it isn't a zero sum game between China and India, but does the China story show up only in commodities for the rest of the world? 30 seconds. Yeah, I really do uh, think that's the case, Kriti. Still, all the way on the way down over the past few years, um, China seems to be acting almost in isolation. I think part of that is because a bunch of global funds and investors have been hoiking their cash and no longer have the same sort of exposure to China as we've seen previously. So, so we only really get it through that commodities channel now feeding through. Unless they come back in, that's still going to remain the case.